All right, so I know I said the last video was the last video, uh, but I figured we need one more, one more example to really drive home these properties of divergence and curl. Uh, and so we'll work, work through this uh, example. Here we're dealing with a vector field uh, with uh, uh, the vector R given as X, Y, Z, of course, and phi given as one over the magnitude of R. So we're given a potential function, and we're first asked to find the associated gradient field. So that is, we're computing uh, del of 1 over magnitude r. So that's our, that's our first step. So we're going to compute. How about we compute? So we need all the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z of 1 over magnitude r. Uh, remember, yeah, 1 over magnitude r is given right here. So why don't we look up, why don't we try partial phi, partial x first. And since this is highly symmetric, uh, we'll be able to just extend this to partial phi, partial y, and z as well. So this is derivative with respect to x, x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the minus 1 half using the chain rule minus one half x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the minus three halves times the derivative of the inside two x. So the two and the one half will cancel out. And then this x squared plus y squared plus z squared, this is, um, well, to the one half, if I raise this to the one half, uh, that's magnitude r. So this is magnitude r squared, just x squared plus y squared plus z squared, raised to the negative 3 halves, mean this is magnitude r to the negative 3, or 1 over magnitude r to the third. So it looks like this is minus x over magnitude r to the third. And then partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, these are going to follow the same uh, the same uh, steps, and we'll end up with partial phi, partial y is minus y over magnitude r cubed, and oops, partial phi, partial z will be similar. Mag negative z, magnitude r cubed. Hence f, which is del of uh, 1 over magnitude r, which is phi, it looks like um, minus x, y, z over magnitude r cubed. Or if I want, I can write that as negative r over magnitude r cubed. Why not? So there's our vector field f, and now we're going to compute. Uh, next step is to compute... Uh, the del dot f. So now compute part b, compute del dot f, which is of course the the divergence of f. So that's del dot minus r over magnitude r cubed. Now one thing I'll say here is that this is an inverse square um, field. If I took the magnitude of this, I'd find that it's um, it's given by 1 over magnitude r squared. Um, so this, this might represent an electrostatic force or gravitational force, something like that. And so what we're really working out here is what's the divergence of, say, a uh, gravitational force or electrostatic force. Now, the reason I really wanted to do this one is because we can see here that this is a product of two, two functions. A scalar function, I'm going to write it as such, minus 1 over magnitude r cubed, um, and a vector function r. Right? Magnitude of r is a scalar, and so this whole thing, this is a scalar. scalar, and this is a vector, right? 
So I get to use this, this um, product rule for the divergence, which tells me that this is given by um, del of the scalar, negative one over magnitude r cubed, del of the scalar dot, um, dot my vector function r, plus my scalar, negative one over r cubed, times the divergence of my vector function r. So here I'm computing uh, something similar is what I computed over uh, in part a, right? I have, I'm computing the gradient of a function, a scalar function that's negative one over magnitude of r to some power. Here it was to the one, right? Phi was just one over magnitude r. Here it's negative of that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip a little bit of steps here in computing this uh, because it's, it's very similar to the last computation. I really just wanna use the product rule here. What we get out of this is minus three magnitude r over magnitude r to the fifth is what this guy is. Dot r plus I still have why don't I why don't I change this to a negative here? Minus minus one over magnitude r. Oop, oop. Magnitude r cubed times uh, del dot r. So that is the divergence of just the vector x, y, z. So that'll just be 3 if you can do that in your head. Hopefully you can at this point, right? x, y, z. Um, so partial x is 1. Partial with respect to y of the y components, 1. Partial with respect to z of the z components, 1. Um, and so add them all together, you get 3. Uh, so we can handle this first term, right? So I see I have r dot r here. I can pull these scalars out. I have r dot r, which remember gives magnitude r squared. So this is minus three magnitude r squared over magnitude r to the fifth minus three over magnitude r cubed. Simplifying on the left here. Oh, it looks like I've, oh no, I, I still have some room. Uh, I have r magnitude r squared over magnitude r to the fifth. That's r to the third on the bottom. So minus three for magnitude r cubed minus three magnitude r cubed. So I've messed something up here. I'm off by a negative. Maybe you've already identified where I went wrong, uh, but something went wrong. I should end up with zero. I know that I should end up with zero here. So let's see, where did I, where did I mess this up? Aha, right here, maybe it was hard to, to see it, but the gradient of this, just the, the positive part of this one over magnitude r cubed is negative three uh, r over magnitude r to the fifth. The extra negative here means this is gonna turn positive. So that's, that's what I messed up. Everything here is going to turn Everything's going to turn positive here. And I end up with zero. So that is the divergence of a gravitational field or electrostatic field is, is zero. And in fact, this is a special radial field. Uh, that has the divergence being zero. There aren't any other radial fields that give this. So these inverse square fields are special in the fact that they have zero, uh, zero divergence. All right, that's it for that video. And I'll see you after Thanksgiving.